Hey, it's Trust No One and Shmoo the Jew. And we're coming at you, rocking it here on the industry's most wanted podcast. And uh, check us out. Riding dirty to the trap. I got some shooters in the back. I can't be trusted with the gun, so I'm just strapped with the cash. But how your plug be texting? But he ain't violent ass. He must be cracked out like the cold, but hey, he get into the bag. I know you bitches mad. You know I fucked your dad. And if he dies, I'm in the will, so you know I'm taking half. And I always keep it safe. Hey, what's going on, man? It's your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industry's Most Wanted Podcast. Podcast Phone. Wanted. <laughs> Listen, I got two superstars checking in today. They can't tell me no different. Trust no one and Shmoo the Jew. What's going on with you guys? How y'all doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Doing good. I'm, I've been anticipating you coming here. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, been, I've been following you for a long time and, you know, just been dying to get in here and be on the show and talk to you and... You know, here we are. Absolutely. <laughs> most definitely. Well, listen, let's kind of break it down a little bit. You know, both you guys, you know, uh, Trust has been here with me before. Yeah. Um, you haven't. So I'm going to let you kick it off. Go ahead and give us like that official introduction. Yeah. So I'm Shmoo, Shmoo the Jew. And uh, uh, this trust is no one. Trust No One, obviously. <laughs> 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 and, and kind of just a little backstory. So uh, in case whoever doesn't know, uh, Trust No One is my daughter. Yep. And just starting off, basically, like, I guess like seven months ago, Trust came to me and she said, hey, listen, Dad, if I wrote you like a, a track on one of my songs, would you go ahead and, and uh, you know, jump on the track with me? Yeah. And I said, sure, absolutely. You know, I, I'd love to do it. So she wrote me uh, a verse on one of her songs, If I Were Bad, and we did that. And then it kind of led to doing a lot of different shows. So I, I went out and we performed live. We we performed live. Uh, we were wanting one of the uh, opening acts. Opening for acts for Sukihana. Yeah. And, yeah. and then we've done a lot of other shows. And since then, we've actually recorded a, a another song called Flights. That's uh, will be released shortly. Yeah. Awesome. And then uh, you know I kind of went to trust and I said, hey, listen. I would like to do like some drill style. Mm, so we're, yeah. we're we're in the works of of, do, of doing he, a, a, a. He drill, likes drill his song. Nicki Minaj. Um, uh, we go up with uh, Five Yo Foreign. That's like his big thing, and he's like getting into Ice Spice. So oh, that's, that's why dope. he's like, we need to do some drill. So <laughs> now I'm writing another. I'm writing another song, and it's gonna be drill. So yeah. awesome. Well, I love that. I love the bond that you guys have created. Um, if you don't mind, just briefly, you know, share the situation. Like you told me before so i'm sure yeah. you don't mind talking about it yeah you know because this is your biological dad but it was yeah. in the more recent years that you guys bonded with each other do you mind talking to us about that yeah for sure so um so yeah so um i always grew up without a dad um he was not part of the picture i actually had two moms growing up and, and, I, and um, I wasn't a baby daddy yes he was not a baby daddy he did not just leave the fam um, so um but yeah so i grew up with um uh, my moms and then my sister as well my sister actually has a different father but basically we both came up from um these like anonymous sperm donors donating at this sperm bank and um, basically, like, I, I'm the older of the two sisters. So they went and they found my dad's profile. He had actually donated sperm, like, 10 years before I was even like conceived of. It, it, um, it, it was on ice for a long time. Yes, he was on ice for a long <laughs> so time. So I say. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so he, he ended up, um, he had like a, um, basically like a packet that he kind of made that had like some like describing words about him and like, like um, describe like what he looks like and things like that. So I had that growing up. Um, but I had never actually met him. Like I didn't have any pictures. I didn't know how old he was, what his name was. Like, I just didn't have any of that. And my sister actually, she had, you know, a different sperm donor. Um, and same thing, she had a packet and we both really knew like that we wanted to see our dads. We wanted to meet our dads, but we didn't really know if that was going to happen, obviously, since they're anonymous. Yeah. Um, so when I was like 18, um, I started, you know, talking with my mom about it and she was like you know if you want to i'll support you reaching out to the cryo bank that he donated at and seeing how exactly it would go as far as trying to meet him and like contact him yeah and so um yeah so i started pursuing that and i actually work with a caseworker for like oh my gosh for like two three years mm. um just trying to find him yeah. and locate him because you know a lot of things especially during the time that like i was born it was like going from paper to digital so a lot of things had gotten lost 
Um, but we finally, um, with the help of this caseworker, I tracked him down. And then she um, reached out to him and was like, hey, do you want to be in contact? And he, of course, was really about it. Um, I'll let him go Aww. into like his whole side thing. Right. But he, um, yeah, so he was really about it. So we, you know, got in contact and she was kind of like our mediator at first. And we talked and like emailed back and forth. And then it went to um, FaceTimes every single day. We like FaceTimed every single day Aww. for a really long time. Yeah, for like five hours at a pop. Every yeah, time we wow. talk, getting to know each other. That yeah. is so yeah. special. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Let me ask you this, you know, because sure. this is the first time I've ever heard a story like this. And I love it. I think it's so beautiful that you guys have built that bond and that you were completely open because I would imagine that there's probably some men out there who just never want to they did it you know donate a sperm for whatever their reasons were but don't necessarily want to bond with the child when you back going back to when you were the donor did you ever in your wildest dreams think you would be sitting here next to your daughter today never so, <laughs> <laughs> just to be perfectly honest yeah so I, I was going to college and uh I was going to film school in Los Angeles. Okay, that's dope. Yeah, because yeah. I have a one of my degrees is in cinema. That is fire. I love it. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I worked in the film and television industry for about 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to school full time. I still had a full time job and I still couldn't make ends meet. Understood. So, so I was donating to a, you know, a, a cryo bank, a sperm yeah. bank, and moved forward. It was kind of funny. So I, I've been divorced now for about a, over a year. Yeah. yeah. So at that time, when I got, and I was married for like 22 years, so when I was first married, I disclosed, which I never thought it would come to fruition, <laughs> right? I disclosed <laughs> to my ex-wife. I said, hey, listen, I just want to be honest with you. When I was like in my 20s, I donated a sperm bank, and I don't think anything will ever come of it, but, you know, I just wanted to... Throw it out there. Throw it out there. Yeah. And she was like, all right, it's, it's not a problem. So my, my ex-wife was unable to have any children, so mm. I just came to the realization, hey, I'm not going to have any kids, but really... You know, deep inside, I always wanted to have a, a child. So when I got yeah. contacted, Aww. you know, I, I was living overseas. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was over in, Where? A, in the Middle East in Israel. Wow. I was yeah. over there and I was working, a, getting a startup company, a research and development startup company up and running. Okay. So I was over there and they contacted me and the person from the cryobank said, hey, listen, don't expect anything. So you probably just want some genetic information. And I said, all right, that's fine. So like uh, Trust just said, right, we started talking. At first we had like a mediator and then we went through all the different processes. And, yeah. you know, we had these FaceTimes on Facebook, you know, uh, Facebook, uh, the video chat. Yeah. And we would yeah. talk for like five hours at a pop at a time. Yeah. And then one thing led to another, and we ended up, COVID came, and uh, my ex and I ended up, you know, moving back to the States. And uh, as soon as I was back, like, no more than, I think, like, two or three weeks, I helped move trust from Denver to one of her mother's houses in St. Louis. Yeah. And, and the kind of rest is history. And the cool thing is, is not only do I have a relationship, you know, with my daughter, Trust, but, you know, the uh, Trust's two moms. Yeah. They're both like really good friends of mine. That and is I had, amazing. So yeah. we were like over one of her mother's houses that lives in like the St. Louis area yeah. at Thanksgiving. And then the other mother's that, that lives in New Mexico, we were over there. So yeah. I, I've actually... He's family. I'm family now. And I, I love it. You, you know, are. So by, in good. real deal family, biologically. Absolutely. Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me ask you, I got so many questions. Uh, let me ask you this. You know, when you as a young man go into the, is it a cryo center? Is that what it's called? Called? Cryobank. Cryobank. Yeah, cryo bank. When you yeah. go into a cryo bank and you do the the sperm donations, we ain't got to get into the whole process the, of it. Do the D. You yes. know, we know what happens. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um. <laughs> Do they ever tell you that things like this may happen that later on that possibly one of your biologicals will contact you and also do do you ever get notified of how many times your sperm is used so how many you might be aware of how many kids you have out there? No, they, they never told me. Completely and, and, anonymous. Yeah, yep. completely anonymous. And, and the kind of strange thing was, like a year before Trust and I connected, I had a dream one night when I was living overseas, and I found, the, and I, it was that, uh, you know, I had a, an offspring that was trying to find me. So Look I actually that. did the research, and I found the, the woman that had, I had dealt with when I was in my 20s, and she was still at the cryo bank, and we talked, and I updated my my uh, contact inform information. But for whatever reason, when Trust was trying to find me, 
they didn't put two to two together to find out that they already had the inform you know the contact information yeah yeah so but 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 nevertheless you know uh, you know i mean it, they they said well oh you know it's a possibility but but it was i consider it like a i consider it like a total blessing in my life right it's like yeah. one of the greatest things that happened in my life because i just became accustomed like all right i want kids but i'm not going to be able to have some my ex will you know can't have children so yeah. you know yeah. it wasn't met in this lifetime and then actually <laughs> you know the, the universe brought my daughter to me and they're like well you know shit you were going to have a child anyways i and love yeah. that and i think as well too like um going back to the other question that you had as far as like um do they contact him as far as things so like it's kind of interesting because he doesn't know anything as far as like future um or like offspring after me before me anything right they don't let him know but my moms they both have like differing stories on it mm. one says that when they went back for my sister that they said that he had run out and then the other one says that it was that he had maxed out at like 10 kids so yeah so <laughs> i'm not oh. sure yeah they're both Dang. very different okay so, you got um, a football team uh, running around this side. Exactly. Okay. yeah so i don't know what the the case is but um they didn't tell him like anything about his offspring um but i did actually find out pretty recently i think about like i would say like a year and a half ago two years ago um my mom actually got me like the 23 and me like dna kit yeah yeah. And so I did that, registered online, and then I actually found a half-brother that I have through my dad um, that, you know, obviously oh. is in this world because he donated. Um, and it said, like, his name is um, Dylan Brown, but that's, like, so generic. Yeah. And just so, um, but there's, like, that's all that's on there is, like, no photo, no age, no anything. So um, I do know that I'm not the only one. Right. But I, he, he, I've tried reaching out to him a couple times, and he is just not very responsive. Yeah. So, um, but, what, yeah. What if he was a rapper? Would that be cool? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. The duo you didn't know you needed. The, the, uh, or I guess we'll be a, right, we'll be a be trio. A, it could be a trio. Be a trio. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And, yeah, I, I would imagine that not everybody's going to be open to it. Like, you, yeah. some of them are raised by who they were raised by, and to them that's their parents, and they just, right. you know, and that's re respectable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I can kind of understand your situation because you were raised having two moms, which is beautiful. Yeah. But, you know, I think a, a girl always needs her dad or her father because that's really our first love. And even though it was like later in life that you guys met each other, yeah. you super bonded. Let me ask you this. What's your biggest trait about yourself that you see in trust? So trust looks exactly like myself and my mother. Yeah. So if my, my, so my dad passed like three years ago. If he would have saw trust, he would have fallen down because trust looks exactly like my mother. So it, it's, it's creepy in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But, but so, and I'll tell you a, a, a story that was really interesting. So when we, we were in New Mexico and uh, I met one of her moms for the first time, we all we sat and we were ate dinner together in a restaurant. Yeah. And you know, you know, sometimes when you think like people are staring at you or looking at you and it felt kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. And usually I'm kind of quiet and I don't want to, you know, want to say anything, but I, I finally said, you know, you know like, why, why are you staring at me? And she said, you don't know. And I was like, no, no, well, well, I, I don't understand. She goes, look at you. You have the same mannerisms. You're, you, uh, you, <laughs> yeah, because we were like sitting on the same side of the booth and my sister and my mom were on the other side and they were both just watching us like, oh my God, you guys do so much. That's like the same, like even just like, I mean, just down to the smallest things, like even just how we eat food and like our, I mean, this wasn't something that we like to necessarily like boast about, but our allergies, oh my gosh, are like the worst. And so like, it was like, oh, they're both blowing their noses together. Like how cute. Um, but yeah, so it was just a lot of different things, even like how we talk and stuff and like the way that we talk. Um, I think our faces look really similar, especially like I've gone back and looked at like photos of him in his 20s and yes. stuff and like really compared it. And I'm like, wow. Like, like twins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And like when you look at my mom's too, like especially my, my birth mom, obviously, like I really don't look much like her. My sister looks just like her. Oh, wow. Um, but I don't really look anything like them. So that was another big reason why I wanted to kind of see what was that missing piece that was out there. Yes. And then once like even my family saw it, they were like, that's 100 percent where you got your looks from. Like, Aww. that's where you got. But, it from. One, but one funny thing is, too, I mean, we're like twins. Yes. So yeah. like, w we have the same uh, worldviews. 
uh, about everything and you know same like political views same political views <laughs> which is crazy and, and actually we're, we're roommates together yeah yes and, and we get along stellar right there's I love there, it. you know she says i act like a teenage boy sometimes <laughs> That's not uh, an assumption or anything. That's a fact. It's probably because you, she, sure. not not that you right. felt like you were getting old, but she probably brought a lot of life back in you. No, no, I, I, absolutely. absolutely. So You're you know, going through that period of that young man that maybe you kind of missed out on, you know, going to school and I don't know how old you were when you got married, but now she's brought that joy back in your life no yeah absolutely and then one thing you know like i said you know my background is is, is the arts uh, an, another avenue right it's not in the music it wasn't in the music industry but it was in entertainment in entertainment right so and i've always been a ham my whole life anyways so yeah. it, it's kind of like so when tress asked me hey let's do the you know would you would you go out and sing this song if i wrote your verse and i said yes and she created this you know, Trusk is the one that created the persona for me, uh, Shmoo the Jew. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because, like, this was, like, a funny story. So when we uh, opened one of the opening acts for Sukihana, we were on the stage. And, you know, I start, you know, th you know laying down my track there. And I I'm doing my thing. And He's know, twerking. That's what he's yeah. not wanting to say. <laughs> no. He was twerking and he was doing his thing, shaking his back. Oh, they, hold on. Before you leave, <laughs> I got to see you twerk. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and it's weird because they they don't they don't expect like the, like the people that are at, at these shows don't expect to see like you know some older white guy yeah like, I love like, it like, like throwing down yeah and, and they were like making it rain on me right like all these women were screaming and making it rain <laughs> yeah. and after I was done I started walking off the stage and Trust was like pick up the dollars Dad pick up the money yeah no that's yeah. right that's and for he you didn't pick it up. That yeah. is so funny. Yeah. Yeah. That is so funny. So let me ask you this. Prior to meeting your beautiful daughter, did you like hip hop music or was that something that she kind of like turned you on to? No. So, so I did. So uh, when I was younger, younger. So when I was in my 20s, I used to ride around and a good friend of mine had like an old beat up Cadillac. Yeah. And that was like the first time I was really exposed to like rap, like a 21, 22. Yeah. And he would play a DMX, okay. right? Okay. Rough Riders. Yeah, old. Rough we, Riders. And we would go, and, it, and the car was like a low rider, so it had high drugs on it. We'd go, stop, drop, shut them down, open up, shop. And we would like, <laughs> In, in the car, while why it's on the hydraulics of the, you know, we're going yeah. up and down. So, so yeah. So I, I, I was, I was into hip hop a, a bit, but then I kind of got, you know, pulled into another direction. Yeah, <laughs> he got I, pulled into country. I, 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 so. I listened to country music for a while, but you know, but once you know, I connected with Trust, and then Trust turned me on to like her playlist on Spotify. Uh, like my my favorite. So we did like they had recently like where you could go on Spotify and you could. It, you know, find the Spotify out. Wrapped. Spotify wrapped. Yes. Yeah. So my top artist was uh, Nicki Minaj. Okay. Yeah. Followed by Drake. Okay. Followed by Little Dirk. Okay. And uh, I had Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah, on I had there Megan Thee Stallion as well. Yeah. So you know, it, it's it's and that's all I listened to. So like the, I'll just say one, one thing that was really funny. So you know, what, uh, on a on a, which has n nothing to do with rap, but on like on a, on a side gig, sometimes I I do some. Uh, some events, right, where I'll, I'll be involved with cooking or serving or whatever. So I was at this event not too long ago, like during Christmas time. Yeah. And uh, it, it was for a, a woman that graduated from law school. So here, you know, like I said, I'm this, you know, you know, middle-aged white guy. And and all of a sudden the DJ spinning, you know, put, spinning records and then he's putting on tracks. And all of a sudden Boozy a Badass comes on <laughs> and I jump off. Call me those, Badass. Right, right, and, and I start singing. Set, like, it, set it off, off in this blah blah blah. blah right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm singing. Set it off, and they're like looking at me, and then all of a sudden, one of the that is so funny. One of the twenty something, uh, you know, women that was there got up and started twerking with me. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. You're a people's yeah. favorite. Yeah. I love it. I love it. When you first started getting out performing with her, were you a little bit nervous? No. Not, no? <laughs> not at no. all. Just because okay. I'm a... I, I, I'm a ham, but uh, a funny a funny story about the first time I ever got out with Trust and we performed. We went to the show here in Atlanta, and one of Trust's mom uh, w was here as well. Mm -hmm. So before the show, you know, we were all in, in, drinking Hennessy yeah. and having a good time. They and, were doing shots of Hennessy, yeah, we, okay. We, uh, <laughs> and, and, and then we, we, perf we performed together, 
and we brought down the house. And then afterwards, we were still stayed to watch the other artists perform and support them. And then, you know, uh, one of Trust's moms that was there was, you know, a, a little bit, a little bit tipsy, a little turn. And, yeah. and she started twerking in front of me, and twerking uh, on, on him. Me, on and me. then he was making it. He, he was making it rain too. I mean, he was I'm doing his so, thing, getting low. So. That is hilarious. And everybody was looking at us like, like we were all a family. Well, yeah, so. and they were like, "Oh, this is so sweet." Like, mom and dad are like together, and I'm like, "You guys literally have no idea. Yeah, like, they've you, never been together. Like, no ever. idea the backstory. Yeah. That is amazing." Let me ask you this, you know, yourself, you know, what is one of the biggest things you see within yourself now that you've met your dad, like that you see a trait of his? Um, definitely his, uh, it's, this is a compliment. So take it as a compliment. <laughs> it um, hasn't even come it, out yet. It, yes. any, anytime you got to put a disclaimer out there <laughs> yeah. first, it's like, yeah, what's she about to say? Right, what's but going on? He is very stubborn and very like kind of, He's not necessarily set in his ways because he's very open-minded, yeah. but he is very stubborn. And especially like when he gets frustrated about little things or like when he doesn't eat, like you can tell that he hasn't eaten in a really long time because he gets cranky. Hangry. Yes. <laughs> and so it's like little things like that. I like, I always kind of thought like my mom's pretty feisty. So I was like, oh, I always get that from my mom. And then like the more that I realize, I'm like, oh no. Like it's like these like little fits of like when I'm hangry and then I'm like, now I can see it in my dad and I'll know, like, I'm like, oh, he's just like, he'll like snap or whatever and say something. And I'm like, I just know it's cause he's hungry. Like that uh, is funny. <laughs> What's your zodiac sign? I'm Aquarius. Actually my birthday is uh, this coming Friday. Happy birthday. Hey, thank yeah. you Happy very much. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Yeah. Cha cha cha. Yeah. That is amazing. What do you got? What are you guys doing for your birthday? Well, we're going to go out and celebrate and you know, just turn it up, turn it up and see what happens, you know? Okay. So let me ask you this. Right. Have you been to the strip clubs yet? S a good story about strip clubs. <laughs> I already know where he's going. Go ahead. So probably about a month ago or so, Trust got, got invited to do a show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we end up going to the show and we get there and I'm like, this is, this is a strip club. <laughs> and yes. She, and she was like, yeah, it is. And what club was it? It was, um, it was called Vivide. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I haven't. There's and, so many of them out there. Yeah. And like a lot of people, when I like tell people about it, like nobody really knows like this club, but I mean, it was, it was pretty raunchy. I'll say that it was like, this guy reached out to me and he was like, Hey, you know, let's, um, you know, I really like your music. Let's do like, have you come in or whatever. And I obviously did not do my research and I brought my dad. So, um, so, yeah. we, so we were sitting there and we had like, they gave us like, they were like, Oh, she's performing. So you have your own private little area. Yeah, my meanwhile, section. <laughs> every guy around there was like getting lap dances and that is and, funny. And it, was it, wasn't, just, it wasn't just like chill lap dance yeah, I mean yeah, like they were basically having sex in front of us yeah. it was just like oh my gosh and I mean like me and my dad are not like vanilla people you know yeah, so like we're not. you know <laughs> like he's like absolutely not <laughs> um, but, so it, it, that part was fine it was just the fact that it was like I cannot believe I'm here just like with my dad. Right, and, exactly. Like, That's a shock factor. Yeah. yeah and yeah, then it's like was... this woman came come over to us and she was like asking me, you know, if I wanted to dance or whatever. And I told her I was like, no, 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 like this is my dad. Like I'm here to perform, whatever. And she just acted like it was so normal. She's just like, and I'm okay. like, who else is coming in here with their dad? I don't know. Right. But I was like, this is honestly really weird for me. Like me and my dad are best friends, but this is like a, a line that That's I still just, your dad. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this isn't a really like a line that I wanted to cross. And maybe if it had been like a little bit more of a like classier strip club, yeah. maybe, but it was just like literally, I mean, everything was out, like everything. And I was just like, wow, like, all right, dad, can I get you a drink? That um, is so So we funny. stayed a while and, yeah. then, and then it got kind of slow. So we ended up leaving. We're like, yeah, uh, yeah it's time. Yeah, we've had our fun. Let's uh, get out of here. Let's yeah. not say we did. Yeah. <laughs> So I know that you said that she's been writing music for you. Is that right. something that you eventually want to get into a songwriting? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd, I'd give it a shot. You yeah. Know? And, and I enjoy it. You know, I, I think I think I, I, I love rapping. You know, I, I didn't think I would like to I would like to do it. But also, too, like I've been at uh, Trust's almost every one of her uh, studio sessions, recording studio yep, sessions. Yep, I, right. I see the yeah. videos. I love and, it. And I, yeah. enjoy, I enjoy it because, you know, I'm, I'm learning from the engineer, the sound en engineer, yeah. as far as editing, as far as, you know, uh, uh, doing doubles on the tracks and such. Yeah. And and I can actually, so the last time we actually went to the studio, which was a few weeks ago, and she, uh, Trust, 
it laid down like uh, five or six tracks. Mm-hmm. I was able to give feedback actually, and I said, "Oh, this it would be good if you would do this or this oh, would sound good." You know? so, yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. That is amazing. What yeah. are you enjoying the most about being an artist now? I just, I, I, I it's a great form, a great way to express yourself. Yes, right? yeah. but I like, you know, I do like like the serious rap pieces as well so like if you have like a, a Nicki Minaj moments of moments for life or something like that or something that means something. I like that but I also really enjoy like doing fun pieces yes right? he's pieces. big into his sexy red too yeah. like okay. he, he likes having a good time yeah I like having a good time so yeah. I, I, I enjoy it and I, I like it maybe it's it, it's the uh, shock factor but I like to see like when we go out and perform like how these, how the people like react when they see us, right? Because they look and they're, yeah. like, they're like, "Who's this guy?" And then we, we just performed this last uh, Friday. Yep, last weekend. Yeah, last weekend, and I got up, and you know, you know, th- they were cheering for trust, but then, you know, <laughs> w- and they were waiting. For, and then when I when I jumped in with my verse, they were like, "Holy crap!" And then they, <laughs> yeah, and then they were like, Woo! They're going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, my God. Like, nobody believes that, like, he's going to come up here and rap. And I'm I like, love yeah. It. Just I love let him it. lay down his verse. So since you guys have been out moving around and performing together, you know, overall, has it been all positive energy? I would say so. Yeah, we haven't really gotten any um, negative energy. I feel like most people that are giving us negative energy are online because they're able to kind of hide, obviously. Exactly. Um, Cowards. Exactly. But um, in person, actually, everybody's been super supportive. I, I love mean, it. Everybody has had a really great time. Um, we've been invited back to a lot of different places and um, a lot of people really commend um shmoo here for everything that he's doing and just like being out here and being himself and uh he goes hard so no no at, at all these shows uh you know both men and women come up to me after the after i do you know after we get off a of stage and they're they're giving me hugs or shaking my hands or right. fist pumping me they're like, <laughs> they're like i f's with it man that yeah. is so yeah. dope yeah. i love it I, I can tell that it's something that you're enjoying And I think I even told her this before, like when I had seen you guys, the chemistry between you that I'm like, she really put a lot of joy back in your life. Like not to say you didn't have it before because I didn't know you before, but I can, I can tell that she probably really just lit a fire for you. And that's important because you know, life is short, right? No, no, absolutely. And then one thing she does as well, which is really interesting. So, you know, like I said, I've been divorced about a year now. So, uh, trust actually, uh, you know, looks at all, all my potential. Uh, I knew he was going to say this. I'm his wingman. That's what he's yeah, saying. That is she's so my wingman. Looks yeah. at the dates Funny. and says, "Dad, yes. I think she's right for you. I think you should talk to her." Or no, uh, this one's not right for you. Or right? no, you need to give her a chance. Stop being so picky. I I have to go through all of that with him. And then of course, he's the type too where he's like, "Oh yeah, she just texted me, and this is what she said." And I'm like, "Thank you for the update. I appreciate that." And he's like, "Yeah, she uh." She's going to call me in like 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, cool. Like have a great time. Um, but yeah, he just, he feels like he needs to update me, but I'll, I'll cheer him on hundred percent. How long so. were you married? A uh, long time. I was married 22 years. 22 years. Um, and yeah. so you said you've been divorced for about a year or so now? Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've, I've been divorced for about a year now. How long were you guys, if you don't mind me asking, yeah, how no. long were you guys separated before the divorce? Uh, like not at all, really. I well, mean, well, it all happened concurrently, so probably like three months. Got you. So it's still fairly new. So you're probably not yeah. super ready to dive back in into a relationship yet. Oh, oh, yes, I'm he dead. is. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the crazy part. Is I, I mean, I like you know, obviously no disrespect. I mean, he had um, you know a very great marriage, and I did get to meet her as well. Sure. And you know, um, I do have a lot of like good memories and stuff with her and everything. But it was just so funny because it's like she moved out in February. And then right after that, he was like, all right, I'm just, I'm ready to start kind of just eyeing what's out here, you know, like window <laughs> shopping, you know? And so it slowly evolved. So, you know, now he's actually, he's had a couple women that he's seen here and there and stuff, but well, good he's, for you. yeah, he's like really big in like the online dating. He's, um, he even just got himself a matchmaker like pretty recently. <laughs> he's serious. He's like, I'm ready to find a wife. I'm ready to like do my thing. So that's beautiful. Cause nobody yeah. really, no matter what people say, we need love in our life. 
Right. Right. We need love. And I mean, who really wants to grow old and lonely? You know what I'm saying? I know I yeah. don't. None of us do. So I think that's beautiful that you're open to it, even though you had, a, you know, probably some really beautiful years with your ex-wife. And do you and her still at all speak to each other? Yeah, we're still friendly. That's good. Uh, there was no, good. No, no hard feelings. It was an easy divorce. Yeah. It's just that, you know, she wanted something totally different for, right. for the last chapter of life than I wanted. Right, she wanted to slow it down, and I wanted to turn to it up. Turn it up. So. And here comes trust. <laughs> exactly. Here comes trust. Well, yeah, and that, the thing is, right. too, if you were married twenty-two years, you and her were not the same person that you were twenty-two years ago when you guys right. married. We as humans, we change and we evolve and we mature and things like that. So it's like, I think that's oftentimes why some relationships in the, and it's not a bad thing. Just yeah. we're not the same person we were 22 years ago, you know? Right. So that's, but that's good. You guys able to maintain a friendship. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're, we're still close. And, uh, and, and it's like, like we were just talking about here, you know, so it's kind of nice too, because I get to kind of look at myself and then, you know, Say, oh well, you know what? I have a do-over now. What do I want? What kind yes. of what kind of uh, woman do I want? What? So I know I know I have it pinpointed exactly like what I'm looking for. He wants something a little spicier than last time. I do. She's gonna help you. And, and yeah, a little thing, bit more colorful. <laughs> and the one thing that the one thing that's funny is that when I'm you know I'm talking to these women for the first time in online dating and they you know they see my age and they're talking to me and, and then they're like I go oh I rap also and they're like, what <laughs> yeah. and, and then I said let me send you the video and then it, you know it's a video obviously with a lot of uh, ex explicit in yeah. it yeah. <laughs> and they're like Wow, that wasn't what I'm ex I was expecting to, to come out of your mouth. Sometimes they don't reply anymore, and yeah, sometimes they, they are continuing to be interested. But, but that's good, though. Yeah. Uh, you have to. That's one thing. And you you understand this now because I don't call us old. We're seasoned. Hey, I like that. I'm going to start using seasoned. that We're seasoned. Once we get seasoned, we understand we have to put it all out on the table up front. You know, like when you're in your early 20s, there's going to be a lot of things we might hide in relationships in the beginning stages. But when you become seasoned, you you like, you know what, I'm going to put it all out on the table. If they like it, cool. If they don't, cool. I keep it moving. Sounds like that's definitely the type of time that you're on. No, absolutely. And you know what? I'm going to steel that phrase from used to when women say like, how old are you now? When I'm, I'm talking seasoned. About, I'm seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a nice curly. Exactly. <laughs> Like a steak that just melts, melts in, in your, your mouth. mouth. Yeah, I'm seasoned. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So 2024, still fairly new in the year. What are some of the things we can expect from both you guys, you I'll know, in, you in the coming months? So um, definitely, I mean, for me, I'm always putting out new music. Yes. Um, I have a couple other videos and stuff and like collaborations. I know with like different podcasts and stuff that'll be coming out here soon. Um, definitely, you know, just trying to keep out like the visual content. That's been a big thing for me. Um, but yeah, I think we're definitely, I really want to, you know, put this next song out between me and Shmoo flights, like he was saying earlier. And I'm currently in the process of writing that drill song. Okay. So, um, I'll definitely get him back in the studio here soon and get him to record that. Um, but yeah, just trying to put out as much like visual content as possible, trying to do shows, just trying to collaborate with as many people. I'm definitely, um, collaborating with a lot of bigger artists right now, which is really great. And I'm on like this new album that I'm going to be putting out um i do have like my first female artists that are going to be put on there too Amazing. so yeah so um you know i'm really like developing my my sound and um really kind of establishing myself here in atlanta and i'm just going to continue doing that and schmooze just right by my side so no no absolutely and uh you know there's a lot of great music coming from trust that we we she just recorded uh, about a week or so ago in the yeah. studio yeah and uh the one thing she won't do that i asked but she, she wouldn't she wouldn't oblige me i said we should do a song together where we both sing <laughs> in it and rap and she's like I don't think so. That's what auto tune yeah. is for, sis. Come on now. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. So on this new album, I have a couple right. songs where I sing and I rap, which okay. is fine. And I'm still kind of getting comfortable with my voice like yeah. that because it's just, I mean, I used to sing a lot when I was younger, but the older that I've gotten, and I think also the more like I smoked cigarettes for a really long time, yeah. I think that just honestly changed a lot and just... Um, my range and like where I feel like I am and I'm still trying to develop myself and like my sound and you know autotune's great and stuff but it's still taking a little bit of getting used to understood but for me it's 
I don't know how this auto tuned would sound like. That's I the, think it would sound brilliant. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I hear him when he's like just comes out of the shower and he's singing and stuff. So I, hey, I, I can throw it down. Okay, especially we'll see. when you we'll have see. a good audio engineer, they're gonna really be able to tune him up because honestly, yeah. I've heard some of these singers live and they don't sound nothing like they yeah. do on their record because they have a phenomenal engineer who yeah. just I could go in the studio who doesn't know how to sing at all and probably come out with a, a hit record because yeah. if you have a great engineer they're going to get your sound right right well i appreciate you being transparent and sharing your journey i was so excited to, and thank you for letting me kind of ask them questions and pick your brain and yeah. you know both you guys being here we got a lot of work to do i'm excited about that yeah. um anywhere we can find you what's in the next immediate next couple of weeks you have any shows or anything booked that coming up yeah so um right now i'm kind of in the process of booking some more shows okay. um, but right now my biggest things is i um do have a, a new video that's about to come out with the cook up um so that's really exciting i'm very excited to be able to collaborate with them okay um and then also i'm going to be putting out a music video here soon for we outside so that'll be really great i'm very excited for that yes um but yeah that's um that's the big ones and then hopefully this album will be coming out here really soon so um, yeah, I would say everything's just always in the works. So they got to yeah. stay tuned. Exactly. Absolutely. And so you guys got to follow me. Yes. Um, yeah. So on Instagram, it's uh, trust the rapper. So follow me on all platforms. Um, and then also I'm trust no one on all of these streaming platforms. And then this is Shmoo the Jew and it's spelled S C H M O O the Jew. So, um, but if you, if you <laughs> and follow me on Instagram too, I exactly. Do. Don't and say it backwards. Like I did. Yeah. Right. Do the, do do the, the shoe. Shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I was in the ballpark range somewhere. You know, hey, it works. Hey, potato, potato, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, thank you both so much for being here. Um, anybody yeah. that you want to shout out to and show some love to besides your dad who's sitting right here. Yeah. So, um, you know, just definitely shout out to my team that's still in Denver that's been supporting me. Um, I really appreciate, especially like my mixing engineer and stuff. Um, my family has been huge supporters of us um, and has been, you know, coming to our shows and watching all of our videos and stuff. So that's been really big. And um, just all of our supporters and everything. I mean, just people that we've been connecting with and collaborating with, just um, everything's been really great. And we're just happy to be here and happy to be meeting people and yeah. No, 2024 is going to be a great year and everyone just stay tuned and keep your eyes on us. Absolutely. Yeah. Trust. yeah Do exactly. you have anybody you want to shout out to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a particular, but just you know. anybody hey, that's supporting shout out to the cats. Hey, there hey. You go. We I, got I, so I, many I cats. I love I, it. I I'm a cat lover. I yes. Shout out to Mr. Pita. Miss you you name them all. <laughs> Tita, Tita, Sweet Pea, Tia, Tia, Tia and Bella, Bella Trex. and Oh, we got Hopper, and we also and, got... And, and Hopper and Thumper. Hopper and Thumper. Yeah. You can't, uh, life without cats is miserable. You got to have cats in your life. I don't care what yes. anybody no. says. Most yes. definitely. Get you some cats. Get you, yeah, get you... <laughs> He's trying to get him some real cats. Yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. Hey. I want to break a piece off. <laughs> Yeah, Pops is getting X-rated over here oh now. Oh, my God. Okay. That is so funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, we are live. Industry. Big Industries Most Wanted. Wanted. You got to let everybody know, and I'm going to ask you first, because you've done this before, you know. Mm -hmm. What makes you, what makes Shmoo the Jew the Industries Most Wanted? No, it makes me, because I, I, I'm an anomaly. Yeah. I, I don't exist in the marketplace. I am white, I'm middle-aged, and, uh, you know, that surprises a, little, a lot of people. And actually, too, a lot of people like that. So when they see, when they see uh, me perform, and, you know, they're like, holy crap, dude, that guy was good. And then they yeah. come and they, they, you know, they greet me afterwards. They're thinking, I'm sure they're thinking in their head, like, maybe I should get, like, my six-year-old dad rapping and write him a verse. Or right. maybe my, my 50-year-old mother should start rapping. So, I love it. So, yeah, so I'm all about it. I'm all just... I want people to have a good time. Yeah. And I think I do that quite well. And people enjoy when I get up and perform uh, with trust. And yeah, that's that's what makes me the... Nobody the, around him is having a bad time. I that's, love that. Yeah. Projecting good energy. What makes trust 
Trust no one. Trust the rapper, the industry's most wanted. Uh, so I'm definitely in my own lane. Um, that's a, a big thing for me. I'm constantly evolving as an artist and um, really developing my sound, um, collaborating with some great artists. And yeah, I'm definitely very different, although I'm not middle-aged. Um, <laughs> I am, you know, a young white female rapper, um, Jewish rapper. Me and him are both uh, represent the Jew. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I'm definitely very different. I'm in my own lane. And um, yeah, everybody should definitely hop on that and check me out. I'm definitely, I sound different, but you're going to fuck with it. So I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you both for being here. Hey, thank you for having us. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. We up out of here, y'all. Peace out. Peace. Just strap with the cash. Bitch, how your plug be taxing? But he ain't filing ass. He must be cracked out like the cold. But hey, he get into the bag. I know you bitches mad. You know I fucked your dad.